All right, I'm on hole number nine of the Holiday Hills Tournament. I'm in Tuesday's qualifying round in the rookie division. And you're going to see a lot of these 13s. Let's see which one they dropped. They picked up eight. They picked up three. Where did they drop one? They dropped one on six. A lot of people do not like six. It's my favorite hole. I do think it's... It, I, I made an epic fail on it yesterday with my low-level account. It was not the course's fault or my club's fault or the ball's fault. It was totally my end-user error. But that that hole ate their lunch. That's one drop. There's another one. Hole number six is eating people's lunch. Hole number, where did they drop one? They dropped one on nine. So and nine is definitely a difficult hole. It's a hole that you have to put some thought into on how you're going to play it. So hole number nine. Hole number nine, if we can get to the right freaking page here, is Nordic Fjords. And it is hole number nine. All right. I will tell you, I'm having the same issue with my low level account. Is it's all about going through this. I mean, look out of here on the fairway. There's not another single spot on the fairway where the fairway is this narrow other than the neck that we're hitting through right here. So it's obviously a danger zone. If you got a... You can come here with a bigger, bigger club to try and get. The further out here you can get into this area, the more it opens up. Like if you bring a sniper, the, your red line is going to be up here, so you can really attack this hole. If you're hitting back into this area, you're going to need a bigger club, and you're definitely going to need a bigger ball. So the question is, you know, you can set yourself up for more success by coming through here with a more accurate club and bringing out a four power ball, and. In my low level account, I don't have any four fireballs, so I'm going to have to attack this with an, an extra mile to get out here. But it's risky. The first bounce is not risky because with with a with your more accurate clubs quarterback and that, typically you're hitting back in here with your extra mile. You're hitting more into the neck, so it's your first bounce is here. Your second bounce is is the deal. If you can survive with an extra mile, you can survive the second bounce. You're you've got a pretty good shot that you're going to end up even if you hit it great to the left or the right because it flares out over here. So if you can survive here on that second bounce and not get caught up in the rough, there's a good chance that you'll, you know, you can make it. But I want to bring an accurate club and I'm just going to bring a bigger ball. So because I want to I want to end up I do not want to have any epic fails on this hole. And I can get this done with my rock. So if you've got if you've got maxed out cards and you're able to bring a power four ball, I want to bring, I've got lots of these, so I'm going to bring one of these. Basically, it's a, or it's wind, it's a titan. Side spin, it's a kingmaker. And it's got four power. It will help me gain some distance on the drive, but the key is, is on the second shot, you want to get up there so that you can really engage your sniper. It's always good when you can do these shots if you can get into a position where you're actually engaging your sniper with a just a little teeny sliver of backspin. Because if you're using backspin on it, you're, you have a little more control over the ball. All right, my opponent's going to the right. You don't see a lot of people go to the right. They've came to their senses. They switch to a power five ball. Let's see where they're hitting. So their second bounce is almost clear through the neck. So if you're using a big power ball like that, you can get through there. I don't think they need to use all that power though with a power five ball. Curious to see if that uh, actually rolls out in the front or if it ends up short. Yeah, nicely done. Nicely done. All right, I'm going to take the wind out. That's 3 3. And I'm going to put the wind, the forward moving wind back in. So all I'm doing there is taking out the side wind.
hitting it perfect. Putting on just about, uh, just revving up against the nubs. That's one ring of power. So I'm trying to put every bit of power back into it without having to do an overpower. I don't have a problem doing overpower and I don't have a problem, you know, doing that stuff. But if I can show you guys a way to get a shot done and you have, you're in the right spot and you don't have to use any overpower. And if the only difference there is bringing a three or a four power ball, I mean, if you can do a shot without having to do overpower, it's going to be a whole lot more consistent because it's a whole lot easier to catch a perfect when you're not doing overpower than when you're doing a max overpower shot. I go right at it. See what kind of look we have with the sniper here. A little bit more distance there, but I'm still not. I would like my red line to be up here, so I'm still a little short. So I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to work on what club I'm bringing here, and I may have to bring, whether I like it or not, I may have to bring an extra mile just to get that distance. I'm gonna. Get down just a little. Three two. Three point two rings. Just try and hit it perfect. No. Oh. Seventy rings great to the right. And it went to the left. So that, that's that's something to look at because I hit that at least two rings great to the right and the ball ended up going to the left. So that tells me that there's either a wind adjustment, some adjustment I needed to make there that I didn't make or that ball guide is absolutely lying. The other thing is too is it, it may not be either one of those. It's just landing zone, the landing zone that I hit. Um, change the trajectory of the ball. But usually if you hit it great, you know, for my, my own personal game, when I hit it great to the right, it should go great to the right. If I hit it great to the left, it should go great to the left. So something was kinky there in that shot. It's a draw. Bangerang. I love that song. I do not want to practice shootouts. Any hole in one I get in a tournament is going to be on a tournament hole. Every tournament somebody in my clan gets hole in ones on those shootout holes. And I am not interested in wasting a hole in one on a shootout hole. All right. That was Tuesday's qualifying round. So the minimum score that we're looking for is minus 14. So I, I got my minimum score. Um, I did have to recover on hole number eight and do a little chip in because I'm still trying to figure out the, the perfect setup with the extra mile nine. But this is the round that you're looking for right here. So where do we have opportunities? We have a great opportunity on one to get a hole in one. Um, I think hole number three, this par five, the wind is going with us. We have a great opportunity to pick up an albie here. It's a pretty straightforward shot. Um, and we do have a great opportunity to pick up an albie. Hole number four, this par three is, you know, it's one of those par threes that you can be close all the time, but it's not one that gives up hole in one very often. Hole number five, another par five, or excuse me, this par four, we have a great shot here. So there's three holes right there that we have a great opportunity. So if you split this up into thirds, you know, you got a par three, par four, and a par five in each third. You know, we've got two opportunities in the first three holes to pick up a shot. Um, we've got one and I like, I know that a lot of people are having problems with hole number six, but I actually like my chances of getting an albie on hole number six. So for me, hole number six is, you know, I feel like every time I go to that hole, I have an albie opportunity. Hole number seven, um, this par of three, it's one of those that I think a lot of people are going to have problems with this par three. I do like my Saturn shot. In today's stuff for this qualifying round, I demoed just to show you what it looked like with a Guardian that you can get it done with a Guardian. But my Saturn shot that I have on this hole is putting me very, very close. Just a little bit of luck and I could end up in there. But 
it's still a low percentage hole in one shot. Hole number eight, I'm picking up what I need to pick up. I mean, I don't have any any choice. So hole number eight, I'm getting it. And hole number nine, hole number nine, really, it's a low percentage eagle shot. And I, I, I'm kind of reluctant to bring out the big stuff and take a risk to try and it's no matter where I put myself out there, it's still going to be a low percentage Albi. And I'm not sure that I want to take the risks of, you know, putting my Eagle at, at risk by trying too hard to put myself in a better shot for Albi when it's still going to be a low percentage Albi. If I was putting myself into some spot and they're like, Hey, wow, you get into that spot and you're almost guaranteed an Albi, then yeah, you go for it. But I, I, I don't know in these last three holes if you have any choice because you've got to get this eagle on hole number eight. So these three holes, one, three, and five, are going to be our absolute best chances. Um, depending on how you play number six, I think six gives us a great opportunity for Albi. I will personally be totally disappointed this week if I don't get at least one Albi on hole number six. Um, every time this hole's ever been in a tournament, I get an Albi on it, and I get a lot of, I've gotten a lot of Albies on this in one-on-one -on -one play. It's probably the one hole I've probably gotten more Albies on this hole than any other hole in the game. And um, I do like my shot, but we definitely want to come in with this minus 14. That's our minimum score. So if you have a qualifier that's minus 14 and you have an opening round that's minus 28 and you go into the weekend round, you're going to be looking at a high top 10, probably in the top five in tiebreakers. And that's going to set you up really nicely for the weekend round. Depending on your bracket, a minus 14, minus 28 coming into the weekend round, you might be the top qualifier. You're going to see a lot of people with these 13s and and keep it. Go look at those holes to see which holes that they're having problems with. Um, the opponent here, like we looked earlier, had a problem on hole number nine, and the other two had a problem on hole number six. So those are holes. Look at your competition at the top and see what holes they're having a problem with, and you've got to make sure on those that you get the minimum score. All right, I will see you on the opening round. That was uh, the qualifying round in the rookie division. Thanks for watching.